Well, now it's time for the most historical part of our show, except for maybe the bowl that this soup comes in. Our conversations with Supreme Court justices. Chelsea, this week you spoke with one of my favorites, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. How'd it go? It went great. Here it is. Bring the noise! I am joined today by the awesome Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. We thank you for giving us your time on the Gorilla Beach Film Factory. Now you told me earlier you had only seen our show once. What'd you think? I just wondered who in the heck's gonna watch that. Really? A lot of people like it. Each to his own. What's wrong with it? It's funny. It should be mysterious. Well, let's talk about this cool job you have. I read a quote from you in Highlights that said that you said that being a Supreme Court Justice is just like being in middle school. Just like we were taught in the eighth grade. How so? You have cases involving detention, Okay. You have cases involving executions of other human beings. Right. Wait, what? You have cases involving executions of other human beings. What kind of middle school did you go to? Uh, I don't know. You had executions there? Perhaps that's a southern thing. I don't know. That sounds pretty harsh. I liked it that way. Your wife tells me you and I have something in common. <laughs> uh, gosh. We both love Orange Juliuses. Wait, Orange Juliuses? Is that the plural of Orange Julius, or is it Orange Julii? I, I have no idea. Describe what it was like the first time you ever had an Orange Julius. It was awesome. How many Orange Julii can you drink at one time? Large or small? Large. 120, but uh, 110 or so. Is there any drawback to drinking over 100 Orange Julii? The ability to, to walk down the mall unnoticed. Do you like the Orange Julius better than the peach or strawberry Julius? It goes against my nature to want to make big decisions. What about the other justices? What do they prefer? But we actually debate it back and forth. So do we. Stallings like strawberry, Catherine likes peach, and I like orange. It keeps you busy. It sure does. One night we were up until like 10.30 debating which one was the best. It's fascinating. I agree. So we do have a lot in common. I don't know whether that's true exactly. Let me ask you some more questions. Whom do you admire most more than anyone? The man who you run into at Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, when you can find one, right? My dad says he can never find anyone to help him when he goes to that place. And Lowe's is even worse. Um, I, I did not have uh, fond uh, experiences up there, and I just don't uh, wish that on anyone. What is it that frightens you? Truck stops. Now, when you go into conference with the other judges, I read that the conference room radio is set to 1025 Light FM. That would drive me nuts. Do you ever secretly go up there and change it? Almost every day. Have you ever tried to love the mellow, groovy sounds of James Taylor, Jimmy Buffett, John Mayer? That's not gonna happen. Yeah, I see your point. Sometimes we all like our own style of music, like me. I listen to mostly Christian music, Stallings likes classical, and Catherine hates country. Um, that to me is judging. Well, I think she doesn't mind a few Leonard Skinner songs. It's, I think it's hard to have a conversation when nobody's listening. Fine. Next question. Do you find it hard to agree with the justices when you're trying to arrive at an important decision? Can you think of any human being with whom you agree on everything? Sarah Palin and C.S. Lewis. We go to lunch together. You go to lunch with them? But C.S. Lewis is dead. They've been nice, they're neighborly, they're friendly. How can he be neighborly when he's dead? You have to make adjustments. Adjustments to being dead? There's still a bunch of people out there you can sit down and have a cup of coffee with. You can't drink coffee while dead. Don't roll your eyes at me. I don't think you can eat and have a conversation and hang out with somebody who's dead. Well, I do. Okay, when was the last time you talked to C.S. Lewis? 
Justice O'Connor insisted that we have lunch every day. Why? So you can both go to the mall and get over 100 orange julii? Initially, that was one of the reasons. <laughs> now I know you're joking. The orange julius hadn't even been invented at the time of C.S. Lewis' death. But it's not brand new. It's not brand new, but it ain't 40 years old, neither. <laughs> hey, I read something else about you in this highlight. It says you know how to hypnotize people. Do you ever do hypnosis on an interviewer? No, I, I, I really can't say I do much. Will you try on me? Do you mind? Uh, no, I don't. Awesome. I'll close my eyes. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. You're tired. You're kind of wondering, why am I doing this? I'm tired. Why am I doing this? Clarence, this looks really boring. Clarence, this looks really boring. This is not Perry Mason. This is not Perry Mason. This, this is not uh, uh, some mysterious thing going on. This is not some mysterious thing going on. It's like brushing your teeth. Now, Clarence, you should come to lunch. Now, Clarence, you should come to lunch. It's warm. Oh, it's so hot in here. I feel like I'm walking across hot coals. The people who put out our fires. The firemen. They're nice people. I really love firemen. <laughs> I feel so refreshed. It's always very pleasant. Wait, my shoes are on fire. Is that normal? It may be. It's not the best news, but... Um, it... Should I tell someone? You know, I don't think that everyone has to know. I think I better call my friends the firemen. They're really nice people. Thank you, Justice Thomas. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you. Can somebody call 911? I think it's spreading to my kneecap. I like that number. I think that's a good number.